Hello, Mikhail. Hello. Sorry to be predictable, but get a bit of team news if we can to start with. Martin Odegaard uh, available? Hopefully, yes. We have another training session today, but uh, he's been progressing well, and um, and hopefully he will be available. So he picked up a concussion. Is that right? Yeah. Against Newcastle. So yeah. you've just been following protocols. Yes, because we didn't know obviously how many days depend on on certain things, and at the end he got more delayed than we wanted. But we have to protect the player. Um, Gabriel Jesus played for Brazil. Yeah. Obviously, he wasn't ready for for the Burnley game, but is, is now available. Well, he is available. He played uh, 96, 97 minutes uh, in a really competitive match. So, um, yeah, we have, as I said, another session. They fly, they had a long flight, and uh, I have to see uh, the condition of every single player to make the, the final call on the lineup. And with Ben White, he, he trained away from the others yesterday in, yeah. in the gym. What about him? Again, hopefully, if he is able to train today, he will be eligible to play, but um, it's a question mark to be resolved in the next few hours. So they're all racing to be in contention? Again, yes. <laughs> um, we do know, I, I guess we can assume that, that Aaron Ramsdale will start in goal. Yeah. How is he around the place when he knows for sure that he's going to be starting a Premier League game? Do you see a difference in his, in his mood? No, I think every player is willing to play, obviously, and uh, they are all excited to play. And when, when I play, I think they are always expecting to play. And, and sometimes we disappoint the, the day before or, or, or the a few hours before the match, but every player is willing to play. If he uh, has a, an amazing game, saves a couple of penalties, is involved in, in an assist, he's still probably not going to play on Wednesday though, right? Hopefully he doesn't need to stop two penalties and <laughs> he does have an amazing game. Um, just quickly, before we move on, Jurian Timber obviously had a terrible start and yeah. a dream move to Arsenal. How, how is he kind of, has he managed to integrate into the club? How is he around the place? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You talk to anybody in that building, everybody that gets close to him, it's a, it's a really special character. Um, we were really impressed when we signed him because sometimes when you see the player live in your environment, training and playing, we win. Wow, we have an incredible player. But then that player had a, a big setback and a really difficult moment to go through. And he's been really special in the way he has handled the situation. Really special. And it's been suggested to me, I hope I'm not giving any away, that we might see him out on the grass at some point soon. Well, I hope Probably so. You know, time. doing what kind of activity, that's something uh, very different. He's been for a few walks as well <laughs> on, on the field, but that's still a bit far from, from competing. But uh, he's in a good place. Um, Gordon Gate, the Anthony Gordon goal, that goal. Have you managed to send your observations yet to, to the FA? Yes, we have, yeah. And, um, and we will try to give our points and the reasons why, and, um, and that's not a lot more that I can comment on. But are you happy with the way that the process has been handled? Yeah, there is a process, and, and, and when you get um, asked to, to give your observation and explain yourself, you have to do it in the right way, and, uh, and we have the mechanism and the processes in place to do that, and um, let's see what happens. And it'll be your 200th game in all competitions as Arsenal manager tomorrow. I think you've won more than any other manager in Arsenal history of those 200, including Arsene Wenger. So how does that make you think? Great, really proud uh, to reach that, uh, that number in a big club is always difficult. And that means that you do have to win a lot of games and, um, and hopefully a lot of more positive things uh, they will come. Another 200? Or 300 or whatever. <laughs> the most important one in our job is, is tomorrow. That's, that's the, only, the only thing that matters. Go to Becky from the Premier League. Big Al, going to Brentford, always a tough place to go, but you seem to have more success than perhaps other Premier League clubs and managers. What do you see that others don't when you go there? Well, depending how you look at it, because two years ago we had a really tough start to the campaign. Um, we learn from that. Uh, it's a really tough opponent, really difficult place to be. You, you look at the stats and, and, as you said, all the clubs going there. They make it extremely difficult. They are really effective, really well coached, um, and it will be a tough, tough match tomorrow. I know you're telling me you're not bothered about the top of the table, but will you have the Man City-Liverpool game maybe on in the morning, the team bus on the way over? We'll watch the games, that's for sure, um, because we're interested in, in the league uh, and, and be always... Um, on top of everything, but uh, we have to focus on us.
And just a word on Thomas Frank, what he sort of managed to create mm. at Brentford with the culture and the playing style. What are your thoughts on that? With Thomas, with the coaching staff, with the club, uh, for me, is one of the most, uh, or the, one of the best run clubs in the league, and and I followed it for many many years, and and the things that they do, uh, the structures that they had, the process that they had in place, the vision that they had, it's incredible what they've done with the resources that they have. So huge credit to them, not only to achieve and get to this level, but the way they maintain it as well with so many changes and um, and the environment that, that this league uh, demands as well. Thank you, Mikael. Over to George from the BBC. Mikael, hello. So just on the FA charge, are you going to contest <coughs> it then? You're not Sorry? going to accept the FA charge, you're going to contest it. Uh, no, we, so we've been asked to, to give... Um, our observations, our opinion, and, and to run through um, everything that happened on the day, and, and that's what we're going to do. That's it. I, I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but if you could turn the clock back, would you say it all again, what you said on, on the same thing? That's not possible. It's like in the game, I give the lineup, then we don't win, and I say, would you do the same one? Yeah. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope we could do that, and stop it, and rewind, and say, well, well, give the ball to him instead of them. We cannot do that. Unfortunately, things go really fast. You have to do that, and uh, and that's it. You learn from everything, that's for sure. Okay. Um, and just a word, I'm sorry, Tommy Yasu, since he's come into the team this season, he's, he's done really well, but yeah. there's a story linking him with a move to Bayern Munich this week, and I just wondered, what's the position of the club? You want him to stay, and will he be staying, basically? I really want him to stay. I value the player a lot. I really like him. I think he's... It's uh, loved and respected by everybody at the club. He's getting a lot of minutes now. He's getting his availability to the level that um, that we need to for him to make an impact in the team, and uh, he will continue to be with us. Thank you. Ian for Talksport. Hi, Mikel. Hi. How are you? Well, um, tomorrow's game is yours is not the early game. Liverpool once again having to play early against Manchester City. How much of an advantage after an international break does that give you? Because we, we often hear from managers who play the early game especially Jurgen Klopp, who will play a lot of them, about how maybe disadvantaged they are. Yeah, obviously, if all the managers would like to play on Sunday, probably better than Saturday or Monday, if possible, especially the ones that we have a lot of internationals, they've been flying around the world and, um, and they have played two games. Um, but as well, we have certain commitments and we don't have much to say in terms of the fixture list and, uh, and we have to adapt to it. In terms of Aaron Ramsdale, who will play tomorrow, um, a lot of people saying with England coming up in the summer of the Euros, maybe he would look to move in January or to get more game time. As a man manager, how do you put your arm around someone who has gone from being number one to number two and convincing him that you need him and that he still will be within the plans of the national team by sticking with you? My job is to try to help. Um, every single player in the best possible way every day to make him better, to give him the best possible chance to fulfill their potential in their career and uh, and get to the highest level as they possibly can, uh, with no exception in, in any position or, or any player. Finally, an award this week for Edu, uh, as yeah. the best sporting director. I think it's fair to say you've got 200 games massively with his support behind you. Just explain for us what he's done for you, how grateful you are to him Really grateful for him, for the club, uh, for the setup that we have and, and the enjoyment that we have working together. I think he fully deserves it. I think he's been instrumental in, in the way that we have changed and, and recruited in the last few years. And, um, and hopefully we can get awards in terms of titles now, which is the next step as well. Brilliant. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Jordan for the Athletic. Michael, this week, uh, you former club, Everton, uh, given a 10 points deduction. Yeah. I guess sort of punishment we've seen. Scale in the Premier League. Just get your, your reaction to that news. I feel very connected to, to the club. Um, very difficult moment. Uh, obviously, puts the, the club in a in a difficult position. But uh, they've been in other many difficult positions. They always find a way to to get out. And if if there is a quality that I think um, I think describes that club, it's is the courage, the determination, and and the fight. And they would fight against anything. And I wish them the best. We've not seen anything like this in terms of punishments for financial reasons before. Were you surprised by the scale of it and do you think this could maybe be a, a watershed moment in terms of the Premier League? 
Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, the, the news uh, took me by surprise, and um, and it's a big one uh, in the middle of the season. But um, I don't know the regulation. I don't know the whole story inside it, and and difficult for me to comment. Can, can I just ask you about? Um, we saw Howard Webb as well during the international break speak go through the Newcastle game and say that the process was correct and they think it was the right call. I've seen you contesting now your, the charge for your comments after the game. A manager's been put in an unfair situation where you're punished for putting your side across, but you've got officials now who can who can sort of say that their decisions on the pitch were correct. No, but I think it's good that we are communicating. I think we have we want to improve the game. All of us, you know, referees, managers, official owners, the sporting directors, you guys, we all want a better game, that's it. And to have a better game as well, we have to have freedom of speech respectfully, in a constructive way, but we have to promote that. If not, you don't get better, that's for sure. And it's good that they are talking in front of the media and explain the situation. I think it brings clarity. Okay, Simon, from the standard. Okay, are you, you expecting to learn your fate of your punishment before the Brentford game, or do you think it might be something that you find out after? I don't, I don't think so. I think um, it will be after. And then just in terms of, uh, you spoke passionately before that Seville game about it, your duty to speak out and be honest, but when you've been hit with the charge now, how much does that change how you're going to speak in the future when, if you speak, you could get punished? I'm going to speak, you know. I think you have to be yourself. And, uh, and as a leader, you have to be authentic. You cannot be someone that you are not. And this is who I am, you know, here when I'm on the pitch, when I'm there. And, uh, and I want to think that, uh, that we have to talk to make things better. That's why we have meetings and I talk and I talk in a really straightforward way two days before that meeting. Really straightforward about certain opinions that I had in the face. And I do the same there, and I do here, and I do there. And when I have to talk about myself and be critical about myself, I'm the first one to do it. And, uh, and when I have to be very positive, I have to be. And, uh, and that's what people expect, that at the end we have a role, we have a lot of responsibility, and uh, we have to stand for our actions and, and the way we are. OK, last couple in the live section. Percy Stephen from the club, from Arsenal. Morning, Miguel. Hi. Uh, with your 200th game tomorrow, if you could pick one as your favourite, what would it be? The first one. Because it's a special moment uh, to have the, the possibility to, to become the Arsenal manager. Um, for me, it was a dream come true. And, um, and looking back to, to that first game, it's, it's something really special. And how, how proud are you to reach that achievement of, of 200 games? I'm very proud. I'm very grateful. Uh, obviously, so many people um, around that have contributed in a massive way um, to be here almost for four years and big thank you to all of them because they've been instrumental to leave me in the difficult moments to inspire me to to make me better uh, to give me support and as well to give me so much joy uh, every single day to be working with them Hi. Over the winter, over the break sorry, there were some comments from uh, Jorginho's representative talking about uh, his contract potentially extended obviously you've got that 12 month option to trigger is that something you'd like to do going forward well i'm really happy you know i don't discuss these things here but i'm really happy with with georgia i think we all are i think it contributes to make the team better and let's see when we, do you have any idea when you might make a decision on that that's a question for edu for for the board for, for somebody else <laughs>